Alrighty, how's it going everybody? Um, I talked about this subject before and I'm going to talk about it again at some point when you're probably, whether you're interested in getting a patch bay, maybe you're not ever interested in getting a patch bay, maybe you're curious about patch bays. Patch bays are very, very, actually very, very simple. Um, very, very simple. It's a very, very simple system. It can look complex. It's simply because of the multiple cables that will be plugged into a patch bay. And then you might ask yourself, why a patch bay? Well, the more, and I'll kind of do a whiz because I'm redoing my cables, but the more you start getting into all stuff like this, all this outboard gear, all these rack gears, you're not going to ever implement this amount of outboard gear. And I have a lot of outboard gear. It more probably equivalent to most, pretty much most commercial studios. You're not implementing any of this gear, including my tape machine, my ADATs here, or any pieces of gear without one of these. Now these are considered more of the low budget patch bays compared to, they're way more expensive patch bays. And the more expensive patch bays are generally, um, are generally basically for permanent installment versus these are, you can permanently, inst permanently install this type of patch bay, but this is going to, is basically based on the type of connection, which that's a different video on how all these patch bays are connected. But generally, I'm just going to talk about these patch bays right quick. There are generally th way, three ways these patch bays are set up. And there, there are three terms. It's going to be normal, it's going to be normal, half normal, and through. And um, there, there are specific reasons why you would want to set your patch bay up to one of those three configurations. Usually, by default, some of these patch bays are already set up for normal. Normal means that it's going to normally go from the top patch bay circuit, like I'll demonstrate here. The top bay circuit is internally connected to the bottom circuit. And so you might ask yourself, well, why, you know, basically, this is the front. Uh, to talk about the front, the front is where you're going to connect your cables. To connect one piece of gear to another piece of gear by a cable but everything that's routed for the patch bay and I'll walk around to the back right quick as I come to my little jungle studio here what you're not seeing in a lot of studios is the amount of cables that are connected through the back so all your pieces of gear that would go into from in, in your studio will be connected through the back. This is the part that isn't usually seen, but of course in my studio you can see it because my studio is not a permanent, it's well, I don't want to permalize a lot of stuff because it's a house. But in some instances, what some studio would, some people would even do this and they wouldn't care. They'll take a patch base sip, something like this, and they'll just cut a hole in the wall and then they'll come through the wall and just run all the cables. I don't want to do that. But uh, generally, you wouldn't see all these cables. Um, and yes, yeah, sure, if I ever move from the house, I can always repatch the wall. I just don't want to do that. Um, for you know, the house is insulated, and I don't want to rip the insulation and do things just in case I create temperature problems or whatever so I'm gonna come back to the front walk back around to the front so we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about normal half normal and through and why you want to configure the patch bay most instances you want to configure your patch bay in normal which means the top connections the uh, outs are internally connected to the in and it's only designed for that very reason so that you can continue the circuit 
and it just allows you to interrupt the circuit so you can reroute it just in case you need to. Prime example would be, I consider this top row patch bay to be coming from, which are the top rows, like for example a live room or a patch panel where I can hook gear up to a patch panel without ever happening to come to the console. The ideal of patch bays and anything, and this is the same concept, even if you're working in a DAW, it's the same concept. The ideal is to connect, and I'll talk DAW, for example, like this ADATS would be your tape machines in your DAW. This is three ADATS, which are which would be 24 tracks. Let's say you create 24 tracks in your in your DAW. Well, the outputs of my ADATs are connected by light by. Where's my light at? It's connected by connected by ADAT uh, EDAT cables. These cables right here. These three A, these three cables. Those three three cables are coming to this patch bay. Um. These is my these are my ADAT uh, cables. The outs on the top, the ins are on the bottom to my ADAT. So I can patch in my ADAT by patch cables into my console. But the thing is, in your DAW, everything's designed to go into the mixing console in your DAW. When you open up your DAW, you're working at the tape machine. Out is by default. So when you're working on your tracks, you're actually working in the tape machine. You're work by default. And then once you've gotten done recording to your tape machine, your DAW, meaning if I was working with real ADATs, then it's time for me to come to this portion of my DAW, which is the actual mixing window or your mixing console. But everything is designed to route through your mixing console. And the same thing when you got it, when you're using plugins, i.e., these would be plugins. That's why a lot of outboard, that's why a lot of plugins look like these actual real pieces of gear, you know, to a point. They're designed to look, to function like real outboard gear because it's out of the console in racks. So your plugins are designed, but you don't have to insert any cables. It requires zero cables in a DAW. In an actual physical live room, control room, control room, everything's connected by cables. So you have to have a centralized point. So this would be my hard drive, <laughs> technically, of where all my stuff would be. Okay, if that makes sense. Okay, so in a normal configuration on your patch bay, the sink continues from the top to the bottom. That's by design. So it's so you can just continue. You're just like the patch base, the middleman port. So basically, I want to continue the circuit, for example, out of my live room. It's going to come from my live room through the patch bay. So I just in case I need to in, insert a piece of gear, a plug in. Um, just in case I need to do that, I can, if I don't want to use a piece of gear, it's just going to automatically continue to come from my live room directly into my console. So what that means is on the back, and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to come back around here, coming back around. In most studios, they would have a patch panel on the wall somewhere, is mounted somewhere. Like this is my, this is a, a ramp mounted of a XR, XLR patch bay, but I'm using it as a patch panel. And all the, these cables right here would continue to come into the patch bay. And then the rest of it continues on these side, about second set of cables are continuing into the console right here. Okay. So I could what I could do is I I can eliminate that patch bay 
and just run my patch panel directly, that patch panel on the floor, directly into the console. But why would I do that? Why would I do why why would I not do that? In other words, how come I would implement this top patch bay um instead of just taking all everything that I would connect from my live room or run it directly into the console? Why would I run it to a patch bay? And that's very, 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 very simple. As it can come from my live room, but let's say I want to implement this compressor right here. You know, this one right here, like for as an example. Or let's say I might want to use that one or that one. Or I might want to use this EQ or whatever, right? I can run from the output, take a cable, run it into another patch bay because that, that piece of gear will be connected to the patch bay from the back, run it to that piece of gear, and then run it out of that piece of gear back to continue this to continue the circuit. That's why you would do that. So if that makes sense. So that's so you would configure your stuff in a normal you will configure your patch bay in a normal configuration for a setup like that to use it like that. Okay, you say, okay, okay, that's how I would do my normal. No matter what I'm running through my patch bay, I want to do that for normal. Do I want to do that for all my patch bays? No. Okay. Other configurers would be half normal. Half normal and normal works generally the same except if you're running in a normal configuration the difference between half normal and normal is if I if I take up in a normal configuration if I take a patch cam cable plug it in the top or the bottom it's going to interrupt the circuit okay in other words it's going to stop the circuit until I continue the circuit with the patch cable so the signal is going to stop until I recontinue the signal. I would need to take two patch cables. For example, let me show you what I mean. If I come over here, grab a couple of patch cables as an example. I'm just going to grab a couple because I'm not going to run any signal. Um, let's just grab a couple of cables. Okay. What is going to happen in a normal configuration is, let's say you got sound going through your console. You know, let's say you're running from the live room or whatever. You got sound going. You could hear it in the console, right? Let's say from your live room, I got something coming out of channel, f channel 5 from the live room. And it's going into channel 5 of the console or wherever you got it running to your console. The minute you take a cable like this, because I want to insert, let's say the guitar player's playing or the drummer's playing or the keyboard player's playing, the minute you take a cable, and I want to say, well, yeah, his signal's coming through is pretty good, but I need, I want to put a little compression on it. I'm going to implement this compressor. Okay. What's going to happen is the signal from the, is good. you're going to hear it in the console until you do this. The minute you do this, the signal is going to stop. You're not going to hear anything else. So what needs to happen to hear it in the console again and also hear that compressor that I want to use, I need to continue the circuit. So for example, I want to use that compressor. So I would come and run it from there, run it from the out into the input of that compressor. And what's going to happen is the compressor, let's say I'm going to use this. The minute I hook it into the input for that compressor here, now the compressor is going to see signal. You're going to see lights on the compressor. But you won't hear anything because you don't have the output of the compressor connected to go into the console. So what I would have to do is take another cable, run it from the output of that, and then I would run it into the input the minute I do this and fully complete it, you would hear not only the signal from the live room again, but you would hear the compressor working, and then you would also hear it through the console. That's would be that would be a normal that would be a normal situation. Now, 
and half normal, it's kind of halfway that way, that same way. The difference would be, only difference would be is, in half normal, if I got it to half normal, even if I ran the output from my live room and I want it and I plug it in, and I plug it to go to my compressor, I'm still going to hear the signal from the live room or whatever source. I'm still going to hear it. I'm still going to hear it. And it's going to go into the compressor, but you're not going to hear the compressor. Now, for me to hear the compressor and the live room signal, as an example, the only way to have number would stop is if I run something to the bottom. And then the minute I plug in the bottom, then the signal will go to the compressor. And why would you do that? You only want to do that in case you want to still hear what's going on in the live room, but you don't want to hear the compressor in case you don't like that compressor. So I can sit there and run it from here. Let's say I don't like that compressor. I might want to go something else. As long as I discontinue the bottom put and I have normal, I can still hear the signal even if I got a cable in there and I don't have it today. I might want to go to a different compressor. So I'm like, well, I don't want to use that compressor. I want to use the um, art compressors or whatever. So I'm going to I'm going to plug it into this one. And so I go to the input and you'll still hear the signal. You'll just hear the output signal. You won't hear the compressor. And then when I run from the output, um, then I plug it in, then I plug it in here. Then the signal will stop. You won't hear anything. And then you plug it in to continue the circuit. Then you'll hear the compressor and the and the signal. That's the difference between half normal and normal. Okay. The last one would be through. Why would I want to through? Then why would I want to set my compressor for through? For example, my live room or my anything I want to continue the circuit to, that you run it in a half normal or normal. Now, let's say I have outboard gear, like my preamps is on this, this my preamps on this one, my EQs on this one, my compressors is on this one as an example. So the out of one piece of gear is coming to the top and the input of a piece of gear is coming through the bottom. You want to set that you want to set your you want to set your piece of gear to to through. So when you have your your pass base set to through, the top and the bottom are not connected to each other on that channel. And because they're not connected to each other on that channel, that's the idea for cooking up all your outboard gear. You want to set up your outputs, all your outs and ins that way so you do not create a loop. So why would I do that? So I'm just so, just for that very reason. So I don't feed the output because doing that and you don't set your patch bait to through. And if you don't set your patch bait to through, it's no different than if I took the output of a piece of gear like this and just took a cable from the out and just run it back into the end. You're just going to create a loop. So why would I want it to run through then? The through is because I want to come out of something and run it through the gear and then out of the gear and continue to go somewhere else. Prime example would be, once again, we were, let's say I had something in my live room on channel 5. I want to come out of channel 5 instead of continue to go on the console like it's automatically doing in a normal situation. I'm going to interrupt it and send it somewhere else. So I'm going to send it to a piece of gear. So I'm going to run it that from the live room into a preamp like my Avalon. My Avalon is on channel 1 here. So I need to come out of the, of the live room here into the Avalon. So I plug it into the input because ins are on the bottom, outs on the out top. It's going to come into the now that when I turn on the preamp and I turn on the microphone, I will see signal. You see what I'm saying? So, um, so now the preamp will start to see signal. If you know what I mean. So. And then to hear that because it's running through the signal, I will still see signal, but I won't hear anything until I run the output of that piece of gear 
to continue where I want to go. So I'm going to run it out, but let's say I want to run, I don't want to run directly back into the console. Let's say I want to chain this output of this preamp into, an, into a compressor. So I can run the output here into and create a signal chain because I'm chaining signal together into the input of my Clark Technic as an example, right? And then I could take the output cable because I would have to go get another cable, run the output in and then go back into that channel. And I would hear that preamp and that compressor in the console. And because my console has direct outs are directly feeding into the input of my interface and then the output of my interface is then going um, this is my inputs of my out of my interface here outputs of going into my interface the out of that interface will then you know come back out in a different patch bay here and it's going back into the console to be heard so I want to sum that up on patch bays on setting up a patch bay for normal, half normal, and through, and why you would want to use, why you want to set your patch bay up in those three configurations. If this is still a confusing, I will try to do another detailed patch bay, but I hope this makes sense. This is one of the starting journeys for people that want to understand how comp how um you know how patch bays and how com commercial studios or studios with outboard gear how they are configured and why they're configured that way so i thought this would be interesting for people that may want to get an understanding on patch bays and why do we use them Okay, thanks for watching y'all. Have a great one.